blessings. And she's seen firsthand that all of the increase was only made possible by God. She witnessed when her husband went down to <clears throat> battle four kings with just his motley crew. Mm -hmm. And God delivered the victory yeah. into, his, into his hands. Not because Abraham was the best looking guy, not because of anything else, but because they were faithful. They were faithful. And when you are faithful to God, <coughs> and, and you, you, if you just start with the first five, and then you increase to the first ten, and then you increase in your, in your observance of, of God and His instructions, then the Torah literally says that your life increases. But it's not just that you have long years, but that you are able to live in those years. And that is significantly different when you're able to live in your years instead of just, it's another day, it's another day, boo-hoo. But you're able to live vibrantly in your life, to progress, to grab a hold of life, <coughs> because it is a gift. And we don't need to, to throw that gift away. So I wanted to go over that. And this, this week, or actually yesterday, as I, as I, as I was at uh, a Christian academy teaching these young minds about the Judaism of their, of their faith, it, it is always a privilege when I get to go over there because there's hundreds and hundreds of young Christian minds there. Every year I get to, I'm blessed to go over there twice a year. And so it is a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. <coughs> it's not something that, oh, another day. No, you go and you're vibrantly talking, you're passionately talking about God. Very much like when, when John got up here and he, and he started to do the blessing, he said, you know, we're going to, and you have to really put some, some yeah, in it. You really have to put some oomph in it, right? Because if not, then what are you expecting to harvest for the rest of your week? Yeah. I mean, you want non-fat, <coughs> fun diet every day? Or do you, you, want, you want something with some flavor and to receive that harvest every day? I mean, you are the pro your life is a product of whatever it is that you plant. Amen. Whatever you put into your life. And so the, sorry. <coughs> so they, they, the young minds had some very interesting questions. And so, but one of the ones that stood out to me, and, and you reflect it when you look at Sarah, right? It says, How hard is it to maintain such a strict lifestyle and live for God every day? And there's another question that's almost, it's just worded differently, but it's the same question, right? It's not hard. It's really not hard. It's a matter of doing it, not being lazy about it. It's a matter of choosing to walk with Him every day, just like Sarah. It's a matter of going and, and praying to Him just like Yeshua every day. It's a matter of putting your faith into practice. <coughs> and not just when it's Shabbat. But doing it every single day. So Sarah, the, the Torah records, Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Abraham was 10 years older than Sarah. He was 137 at the age of her, at the time of her death. 
through their faith, through their walking with God, this extended their life and allowed them to live <coughs> fully within their life. After Sarah passed, Abraham lived another 38 years and had even more children. Now one of the things that really, and, and, and you all heard it read, but I'm going to go ahead and read it again for the sake of things. In Genesis, verse 23, chapter, verse 5 through 6, And the sons of Heth answered, Abraham saying to him, Hear us, my Lord. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. The Hebrew word for mighty prince is Nisi Elohim, uh, which might more literally be translated prince of God. Abraham's relationship with our God uh, is, is witnessed by all who are around him or all who even hear of Abraham. They know that he has the favor of God. What do people know about you? Do they know that you have the favor of God? Do they know that you walk with God? Do they know that you speak to God? Y'all are quiet now. And I'm not saying that to get after anybody <coughs> here. But I am suggesting that if you want to live more fully in the life that you have, and perhaps even extend the, the life that you have, start walking with God. Start walking with Him. Start putting this, how hard is it? It's not hard. You just have to start doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's really not hard. Is it hard to eat kosher? No, it's actually not. You just say no to stuff that you know is... Yeah, technically not food. Um, I mean, we could eat feet all day. That just doesn't mean that they're, con that they're designed for consumption, right? They're not. They're designed for walking on, not for eating. Right? So... There are things that are purposed for our consumption, <coughs> and this is what we eat. But not to get into that, uh, so Prince of God, that says something. That says something. That says something. But yet you and I later are called also sons and daughters of God. So that infers that you and I are also princes and princesses of the Creator. But instead of conducting ourselves and carrying ourselves as such, we get off into other notions. And very much like the prodigal son, sometimes end up laying with pigs in feces. And it's not a pretty picture, but it's what, it is exactly what happens when we choose to leave the Father's house and go our own way. <coughs> it is exactly what happens when we leave the Father's house and go our own way. Because we think we know best. God knows best. Amen. So there is... So he went and he was called up <coughs> to Hebron. The related word for that is friend or associate. Centuries later, God would call with an Isaiah. Still refer to Abraham as my beloved friend. Although this, is ho ho this association between Abraham and, and our Creator rests <coughs> in Abraham's choosing to walk with God. Right? If I want a good relationship with my brother, I have to begin to walk with him. I have to begin to be concerned about his concerns. And, and even make some of those my own to a degree. For it to infer that Abraham was God's friend, 
meant that he took upon God's concerns. <clears throat> he walked with God. He spoke with God. He spent time with God. Can we this morning say that we are friends of God? Can we say that we are children of God? Yep. Are we walking with Him? Are we taking up His concerns? Are we just busy converting people? Let us worry about being friends and children of God first and foremost. And all those He brings into our life, then let us begin to walk with them as well. <clears throat> this is the only way that it makes sense when it says bear one another's burdens you cannot bear each other's burdens if you are not walking with them I'm going to do it by proxy I'm going to do it over here you stay over there I got you if you fall just, just make in your mind like I was there for you okay <laughs> But you can't, can you? You can't. You have to be there and be involved. And some people say, well, you know, I, I go, I go, I go, and nobody, nobody, nobody. So why are you depending on them being in, why is your involvement dependent upon other people? Why is your involvement dependent on other people? Your involvement in God's kingdom is dependent on you. It, it, it doesn't matter what rabbi's up here. It doesn't matter if we get a pope over here. It wouldn't matter. Your involvement in the king is dependent on your involvement. Then Abraham went in and bowed before the, the people. And he spoke to Ephraim in, hearing, in the hearing of the people. So he said it where everyone could hear. Let me make no mistake. I am going to do what is fair and what is right by you. I am not going to take this land and just sit to where it could be perceived that I am taking advantage of the situation but I am going to do what's fair and what is right because I am a child of God. Amen. He says, I will give you money. He said, please hear me. I am going to pay you for the field. I am going to earn the field. <coughs> I am going to work for the field. But Ephraim kept insisting, kept insisting, just take it, just take it, just take it. But sometimes when you take things from the world, then you're, in, then you're stuck in obligation to the world. Now you're obliged. The Bible says, no, owe no man nothing. <coughs> that we are not obligated to any of them, but you're only obligated to God. Right? So he says, just take the land. Abraham says, look, listen, and all your folks here can hear me. I will give you money for the field. I'm not taking it. I appreciate that you call me a, a, a prince. <clears throat> and so he ends up paying him. So the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, all that, the cave, everything was then, was then, was then deeded to Abraham. For the, as a possession in the presence of the sons and all of the tribe that was there. <coughs> and this is significant. Because it wasn't that 
It said he left on good terms. He entered on good terms. But here at, at Brook Elohenu, when we left the other location, we paid that month. Even though we left well before the month was over. Because we were going to leave them in a spot having to come up with this, this <coughs> difference, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you have to continue to do what is right regardless of if they happen to follow your God or not. Amen? Amen. Now the 400 shekels of silver in Genesis 23, uh, and then the parcel of land in Shechem, where Joseph would be buried, uh, was purchased for a hundred pieces. And you see the, the kind of the relation which David later purchases for 50 shekels. So there seems to be a bit of a depreciation of, of that piece of land mm -hmm. over the years. It went from 400 to 100 to 50. It reminds me of when our sons asked us for money. Dad, can I have 20? I said, what? You want 15? You'd like 10? Here's 5. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we kind of chew them down a little bit. No. Uh, that was a bad joke. All right. <laughs> yep, yep, it was. All right. Uh, so the three locations today comprise the, of the length of what the so, the so called of what is so called the West Bank. So these three locations in that same area that David bought that. Uh, Joseph was buried that Abraham purchased where Sarah is. This would be where we know now is the West Bank. And it's still, it's Father Abraham's. It's David's. It's Joseph's. But let me move further on. Each of these locations were legally purchased by our people throughout the times, throughout the generations, and would constantly be a, a repeated <coughs> promise as an inheritance to others of the seed of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob forever. In Genesis 24, it says, And I will make you swear by the Lord your God. And by the land of God. And as often as this happens in the Torah, the new attributes and new aspects of this concept, it all started with our father Abraham in Ur. <coughs> I love Abraham's thing, 24, he says, perhaps this woman won't follow me. Perhaps she won't follow me. And then later, Isaac says almost the same thing, perhaps she won't follow me. Why is it that sometimes we're placated with more insecurity than, you know? We're children of God, we see the hand of God in our lives, but yet, Insecurity and doubt sometimes enters into us. <coughs> Perhaps I'll go and I'll be the only one there worshiping. Perhaps I'll, I'll lead the Torah team and no one will listen to me. Perhaps I'll, I'll want to start a band and I'm the only one in it. Doing all the instruments. Anybody, anybody over twenty, probably well, maybe a little older, probably remembers the guy who would have all the instruments on one thing. Yeah. And he'd sing a song, blow on the microphone, harmonica, and sing a song, blow on the harmonica. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. It was a very interesting The Witness, the guy doing the one-man show with the whole band there. <coughs> but God hasn't called any of us, and He didn't call Abraham to be a one-man show either. So this week, two of the divine attributes that we can see highlighted within the life of Sarah is the attribute of hesed, or love and kindness. As long as Abraham was around, it was far less for God knew that he had his partner acting on his behalf and on behalf of the kingdom. The other part So I guess I'm, I'm going to get ready to conclude because I know some of us have to be back here for this evening for the vigil. Um, and if you're not aware of that, I'm sorry if you didn't get the text or the snail mail or any of these other things that we use. Um, but tonight we'll be doing a vigil with several of the congregations on behalf of the, the, the children because it was mainly children who were murdered in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, and the other brothers and sisters who also lost, lost their lives there. But that being said, this week, <clears throat> make for yourself a purpose to go where God calls you to go. And whatever God has placed within you to do in his kingdom, just do it. Stop hiding behind the worldly excuses. I don't have enough education. I, I don't speak uh, Hebrew with a Yemenite flair. Um, <coughs> or a Mediate with an Ashkenazi zing, right? <laughs> or whatever other thing it is, it, be a partner to God. Be a friend to God. I know the, nation, the notion itself is a little foreign to some people. But since the beginning, God has always desired to be with His creation. This is His desire. To walk with us, to speak to us, to just have that connection with us. He sent Messiah so that way... Nothing can keep us from that connection. And yet still, we deny the connection. We're like, no, I, I don't want Wi-Fi, I want to stick with dial-up. <coughs> Choose God. Watch your life grow in ways that you didn't anticipate. Because I promise you, his plan is always better than our own. His plan is always that you should heal, that you should prosper, and that you should actually have a life. Not that you're just going there and counting the days until you go to the next life. Well, I think it's tomorrow. Maybe the next day. <clears throat> no, but that you should live fully in the life that you have. Or should we be the kind of creatures that simply watch life on TV? Or, because from what I understand, a lot of people are watching TV on the computers now. So, because TVs are fading away, I guess. I, I don't know. I still have an actual TV, so I don't know. Um, but I talked to my sons, oh yeah, we watch that on our computer. Huh. All right. Yeah, on the phone, that's the thing. They just go with the phone. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm watching the show. What show? I can't see it. Where are you last at? Yeah. So I just got there watching the movie Jacob. Oh, yeah. I saw your shoulder in a little glow. I didn't know. <laughs> but 
This isn't our calling <coughs> to sit down and watch life as it happens on a screen. Right? I mean, it's okay every now and again, but you're watching the fabulous life of whoever. What about your life? You're called to walk with the creator of the universe. You're called to walk with the covering of Messiah wherever you go. You're called to raise the dead, heal the sick, give sight to the blind. When, when Moses was approached because people were prophesying, he says, you know what, I wish all of you would do it. <clears throat> I wish all of you were speaking the words of God. Because then maybe the world would change. So maybe if we stop watching life and start living life with God, the world will change all around us. But we have to choose to walk with God. We have to choose to be His partner in this. Just as Messiah was, just as Moshe was, just as Joseph was, just as Abraham and most certainly just as Sarah was his partner. Deborah was his partner. Rebecca was his partner. Miriam was his partner. There are several sisters throughout the scriptures that also chose to be God's partner. And they were blessed. And all around them were blessed. They didn't stop to see what was playing at the, at the 50 cent movies. They lived life. And I, I'm not here to say I don't ever watch TV or this kind of things because that would be false. I absolutely go to the movies and other things. But we have to live our life. I can't tell you how many times I simply go to a store or go speak at a school and everybody's just in their, this is what I do most. <coughs> and so you, you break the monotony, right? You see a guy with the, with the name plate that says Abraham. Say, hey, I knew your wife, man. I read all about her. She's great. <laughs> I love the story about y'all. You defeat four kings. Is that right? Like, what are you talking about? And you start talking about the Bible, right? Started talking about how blessed they are. It doesn't matter who it is. Black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you have to live, live, and be a partner of God. The Torah records and the sages most certainly record that anyone who came through their territory, 